underneath all that white stuff from my pits. But uh, I'm going to go to the store and get a couple things for some stew, but we'll dig it all out. I got it covered up underneath, so my wood and everything underneath is okay, but just going to have to sweep some snow off. Got the snow all cleared off, and uh, I dug out the deeper of the two pits, and I've got the 12-inch trivet in there, and I'm going to start a big fire in there and get some good coals uh, for some stew we're going to make here a little bit later. Okay, here's the wood pile I pick everything out of, and as you can see, building a cabin, I've pretty much got an endless supply of lodgepole from the logs, Douglas fir, and ponderosa. Um, so this is bucket number two. I'm going to go down to the pit now and show you I did what I did with the first one. Just a little side note here, when I uh, clean the pit out, I don't waste those ashes at all. I use it in my little garden up here. I got a little high country garden. It's full of aspens and I plant sunflowers in there, but I throw all those ashes on top of this poor farmer's fertilizer and it soaks into the ground real good. Okay, you can see how I've taken the firewood here and the bigger chunks of put them vertically into the 12 inch deep pit uh, just because I want to warm up all the rocks. And the next bucket's just going to get piled on top of that so they'll burn down into coals. And I'll have a nice circle of coals for the Dutch oven to sit on. As you can see, the north side still got a lot of snow on it, so I'm probably not going to be able to get back to work up on that roof for another day or two. But uh, I'll be making some videos of building the cabin too along here. I'm just, uh, I got to get some more materials for the shed dormer roof on the back side. And I might make a video of that showing you what I'm doing in there too. Okay, you can see I pretty much just buried that trivet in there. And I've got the wood chunks. I've got a lot smaller chunks now that I put on the top that are just going to burn their way down in there. But I'll probably start this fire maybe, uh, I don't know, two hours before I want to start cooking. This other one I'm using for some singeing and stuff that I'm going to do with some of the meat that's going in the stew. That's why I got it going now. But I'm going to lay the grill down on that here in another hour or so and just uh, cook that. And then that'll be, I'll be done with that. Then we'll go back and do the Dutch oven over on this pit here. Well, I did have uh, all the ingredients laid out here to prep them, and I actually turned my back for maybe 30 seconds. And a certain yellow vagabond helper seemed to think that that bacon had his name on it. Well, well, he looks pretty innocent, doesn't he? Hey, Dakota, what happened to my bacon? Oh, I have no idea. Well, he's going to stay tied up until things get put in the pot. Okay, here's the ingredients for our uh, mountain man stew. Pretty basic. Got some venison over there, the trimmings from when I butchered a mule deer last week. Uh, it's never been frozen. I got some nice yellow potatoes and two sweet onions. And once that bacon pack uh, thaws out because of you-know-who, I'm going to probably take about four or five strips out and then put it back on ice. But, uh... It's an old recipe, real simple, real easy, and delicious. Okay, that's about a pound and a half of meat, five or six uh, yellow potatoes, and two sweet onions. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the fire hot, and I'm going to throw the grill down and just put some bacon in the bottom of the Dutch oven and let it get going, and then I'm going to sear the meat, brown it just a little bit, and then take it off, and then I'll mix it in, and I'm going to throw some beef stock in there and get this thing to a simmer on the other pit when it's ready. Okay, the fire needs just a little bit of mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to get rolling. Oh, there we go. Okay, that ought to get going pretty good now. Okay, I cut all the chunks into about the same size of the potato and the meats. Like half an ice cube to an ice cube. The onion, I just cut them into wedges. And the frozen bacon, I cut into some slices to try and get it to thaw out a little bit, thanks to my little friend. Uh, like I said, I've got salt and pepper on it, and I've got some beef bullion, or beef broth rather, that I'll, after the meat's been browned with the bacon grease, then I'm going to put the broth in there and then add all the vegetables and get the other pit ready so it can sit on top of the trivet and uh, simmer for maybe 
uh, 40 minutes, something like that. Okay, the bacon's uh, pretty much all the way cooked, so what I'm going to do now is uh, drop this meat in here. Sorry. And uh, just start stirring it. So this 12-inch pot just the right size for this meal. Because uh, when I put all the other stuff in here, it'll be a little more than halfway full. Okay, so I'm going to just keep stirring this and browning it up, and then I'm going to take it off the fire and put it on the trivet and wait for those coals in the deeper pit to get ready. Forgot one thing. The meat's pretty much browned up. What I'm going to do now is pour some uh, beef broth in there. I don't know, fill it up. I don't want to cover the meat, but just get it. See how it's bubbling real nice? Take advantage of that hot cast iron. And I'm going to put the lid on it, let it simmer for about 5 or 10 minutes, then take it off. And then we're waiting for the other fire pit to get ready. Okay, I added the rest of the ingredients. This fire is just about out, but I did get to simmer the meat for about five or ten more minutes but when I added everything in there it just kind of went to a sizzle but the other fire was just about ready so what I'm gonna do is just let this sit here on this low heat for a while till the other fire pits ready I stirred it up real good and I added about I guess a pint 16 ounces of the broth so I might add some more if it starts to boil out later on but right now that's you can see it's about halfway up in the the Dutch oven so I'm just going to put the lid on it and let it sit here till the other fire pits ready okay the deep pits been burning for about 20 25 minutes now and it's you know, the trivets exposed and I think in about another half hour the fire will be out and it'll be time to back up a little bit that's warm the fire will be out and it'll be time to put the Dutch oven on there well while the coals are getting ready in the deep pit I'm going to go check on one of the other projects for later this week seeing as it's Thanksgiving I've got one of these high-tech refrigeration devices here and the way I measure snowpack here is, yeah it's staying nice and cold bears are gone for the season they're all nighty night so uh, otherwise I'd have this thing locked up with the dog food in one of my metal containers but it's okay out here now. I just keep it in the shade because it's almost 60 degrees out now, but there's still snow on the ground. So this will stay in here till probably Tuesday morning when I'll take it out and let it hang and thaw. And then we're going to bone it and cook it in Dutch oven for Thanksgiving, but that's going to be one of the next recipes coming up. Okay, I've had it on the deep pit for about uh, 10 or 15 minutes now. The fire is almost out, but that pit's holding a lot of heat. And even those trivets, the rebar legs and the horseshoes, they, they connect that heat down to those rocks. And it really makes a big difference. This cast iron is something else. Okay, it's going a little too hard there now, so I think I'm going to take it off of this thing for a while and let these coals get a little cooler so I can get it down to like a slow simmer. Even with a 12-inch trivet, this is uh, really going. So I'm going to take this thing off of here and let the, it may wait half hour, 20 minutes. Had a little time to kill here, so one of my other pastimes I love to shoot my bow. It's a bow I made about, let's see, there we go, I guess about 15 years ago. And uh, yeah, that's from one of our less desirable visitors here in the summertime. I got them on these limbs. I made these arrows out of some Douglas fir we logged, and those feathers are off of wild turkeys my son and I killed. So, uh, well, it's just something to keep you busy while you're waiting for the coals to cool down a little bit. Yeah, when you start doing this, that means you got to go back about five yards. This is 20 yards, and that's kind of my range, but actually for some reason or other, I haven't shot my bow in a oh, good two months, and it's a good day, but fortunately it didn't break the air. I just got to replace the knock. Okay, it's still simmering a little hard. I've been taking it on and off you know letting it rest for five minutes and putting it back on for a couple minutes and I just go back and stir it good make sure nothing's sticking on the bottom but with stew the potatoes are really the indicator for me uh, I don't want them too hard but I don't want them mush either so we just keep an eye on these yellow potatoes 
actually I'm going to take it off of this thing for a while and let these the coals if you can see looks like they're all gone it's those rocks and that rebar and those horseshoes are just convecting that heat into this cast iron I mean you can take it off of here and put it back on and shoot it's already doing this in two minutes so the idea is I'd like to have it do a real low low simmer for about 20 minutes to get these potatoes right okay it's a pretty slow simmer now the potatoes are almost all the way done so I think another I've been taking on and off of the pit here because it just it's been getting too hot those rocks really are hot but uh, I'll let it sit here for a couple minutes take it off for a minute put it back on uh, I'd like to get it to the point where I can just let it sit here and cool off right on the, the trivet then that's my goal anyway so uh, but everything it smells really good <laughs> so we're gonna let it simmer here a little bit more might take it off a little bit more let these coals let the rocks cool down just a little bit it's just not that cold out today so things are staying warm but it, it's, it's coming out really good okay it's been a low simmer for about 35 40 minutes plus all the other cooking that's going on with it so what I'm going to do is just let the cast iron kind of radiate that heat I'm going to put the lid back on it and I'm going to take it off the fire and just wait till that cast iron cools down all the way but uh smells really good I just had a piece of meat tasted wonderful and my wife just said the potatoes are perfect so we're just about done okay it's basically cool to touch now and I got a little block of wood here I'm just going to let it set up there and cool off so it's so the cast iron's not so hot but it's just about time for supper well folks I hope you enjoyed this I appreciate you very much watching the video and I hope you have a great rest of the weekend and a nice evening see you later